Well, hello and welcome from Margaret Moore, a.k.a. Coach Meg. Uh, we're starting our uh, webinar today on uh, how and why does coaching work, uh, where I'm going to explore um, some evidence-based mechanisms of action, and I'll provide a little background to that. Now, this is not going to be a coaching class, which means that I will be in lecture mode for the most part. And I have with me my partner in crime, B.J. Richstone, who is um, as maybe the most critical person to this work. And so I want to acknowledge that. And I've invited B.J. to jump in and add her wisdom and insights along the way. So I'm going to run through each of these mechanisms now just to bring them alive. Um, I'm giving you really a top level view of them. You can obviously take this further in your own thinking. Um, the first thing about the growth promoting relationship is that it, the relationship will not promote growth so long as the coach is sitting in the driver's seat. And so in order to build autonomy, in order to build self-sufficiency, we have to put the, the client in the driver's seat, which means that they're doing the work. We are the, by, the passenger. Um, we're not driving the car. We're not making the decisions. And so the first thing to say is that to foster autonomy, we have to design a relationship that puts the client at the driver's seat. And it's the self-determination theorists who have taught us that autonomy is one of the core human drives. And that's good news because, in fact, we often think people want a quick fix and they don't want um, to stand on their own feet when it comes to their health and well-being. But in fact, if they build confidence and motivation to do it, autonomy will shine through. It's our, national, uh, our natural birthright. Motivation is an absolute requirement for change. Uh, I think about it as the fire, the flame, that burns either not so hot or hot. And for many of us, motivation feels, and many of our clients, feels more like a flickering candle and easily snuffed out by even the tiniest breeze, and so quite fragile. And for motivation to serve us through a change process, and obviously the bigger the change, the more challenging the change, the more fiery the motivation needs to be. It truly is fuel, jet fuel, fire. It is the burning desire. It's what keeps us going up and down, around and about, whatever the, the journey looks like. It's what keeps us on track. It's that burning desire. We've talked about the desire to change. This is about one's ability, one's capacity to change. And this is where we owe uh, a lot to the field of positive psychology. The work of Al Bandura and social cognitive theory, which is the sort of underpinning of our thinking about self-efficacy, has now really been embraced under the umbrella of positive psychology, even though his theory has been around much longer. It's now really considered part of the business of helping people thrive and flourish. Resilience is so important because people are going to bump into uh, bumps in the road, roadblocks, and Falling down, and, and as you see in this cartoon, and getting right back up again is a necessary skill for success. And so people need to build resilience. They need to have the mind of a scientist. You know, if I don't succeed the first time, then uh, it may be the next. I'll actually make it. We now know from the, the latest work by Todd Cashton, uh, summarized in his book called Curious, that curiosity is an important psychological skill that it correlates with health and thriving. And so being curious, seeing things as, as anything, waking up in the morning thinking, I wonder what's going to happen today. You know, dealing with things that happen that aren't so good, you know, the challenges in a, with a curious mindset is an important uh, psychological strength that builds our capacity to change. So basically, the process of change is a journey. And the journey has steps and theory is sorry um, um, steps and 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 uh, approaches and tools and and stages and that we as coaches understand those stages and have a pretty good toolbox that we can draw from um, as we help people navigate this journey. 
What's important is education and skills and knowledge do matter. And so, um, but the difference between the expert approach and the coach approach is that we're delivering it just in time. So that, you know, we're not asking people to learn skills and, and, and acquire knowledge um, when they don't need it which can be overwhelming, or giving them the wrong things at the wrong time or too much. And so, so part of this journey of change is that people do need to learn, and they do need to develop skills. But we need to be a lot more thoughtful about doing it in a way that maintains autonomy and is, is not overwhelming. We're drawing from a whole range of theories in thinking about processes of change. Uh, you know Mount Lasting Change came from the trans-theoretical model. Appreciative inquiry has a step-by-step -step process of change, as does hope therapy. I mentioned Bob Keegan, his immunity to change, in fact, is a change process. Goal setting theory has um, something akin to a process, and also adult learning has as well. So lots of different processes that we can draw and integrate from. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, BJ, for our wonderful partnership in uh, realizing this work. And as I say, onward and upward. This is not the end. This is the beginning. So I look forward to future conversations. Thank you, Margaret. And I congratulate you for a wonderful, uh, coherent, and exciting presentation today. And I uh, wish all of the coaches out there um, a very, very gratifying and um, uh, happy career as they move forth with the knowledge from today, as well as I encourage them to continue to stay tuned for all of the further evidence-based research that's being done that will continue to inform them and make their coaching just greater and greater. Fabulous.